بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم my lecture today is about the brain and its main divisions which are the forebrain, middle brain and hind brain the brain is a complex organ that acts at the control center of the body let's say all our activities all the activities of the body are under the control of the brain as a component of the central nervous system the brain sends yourself receives يستقبل ويستلم processes يعالج and directs ويوجه sensory information there are three major divisions of the brain of the brain with each division performing specific functions so each division has its own specific functions what are these three divisions we have the forebrain which is also called prosencephalon the midbrain which is also called mesencephalon and the hindbrain which is also called rhombencephalon and this picture show you these three part or three divisions of the brain here we have this area or this part of the brain is called the forebrain all this is the forebrain all this the forebrain and this part is called the midbrain and here we have the hind brain and of course each division has many structures as we will see later on in the lecture now we will start with the forebrain which is also called prosencephalon the forebrain is by far the largest brain division it is the largest brain division and it includes the cerebrum al mukh which accounts for about two thirds two thirds of the brain's mass and covers most of the brain structures the olfactory and optic cranial nerves the first and second cranial nerves which are the olfactory and optic cranial nerves are found in the forebrain and in addition to these uh, cranial nerves we have also we have the lateral which are the right and left and third cerebral ventricles so these are within the forebrain the forebrain consists of two subdivisions and these two subdivisions of the forebrain are called the telencephalon and diencephalon the telencephalon and diencephalon and of course each one of these subdivisions is composed of many parts as we will tell you in the uh, next paragraphs first we will talk about the telencephalon a major component of the telencephalon is the cerebral cortex which is further divided into four lobes and these lobes are the frontal lobes parietal lobes occipital lobes and temporal lobes of course these names depends on the or take the name of the bone related to them frontal lobes have the frontal bone parietal lobes parietal bone occipital occipital bone and so on this picture show you these four divisions of the telencephalon here we have the frontal lobe of course this is the cortex but all of it is called lobe but here the upper is called the outer layer is called the cortex frontal cortex and here we have the parietal all this is the parietal lobe and his this is the yellow this is the occipital and this yellow is the temporal lobes and as you see the surface of the brain contains and bulging or elevations which is called gyri the plural of gyrus 
and between the gyri we have the impression of grooves which is called sulci so these lines are the sulci plural of sulcus all the brain contain these uh, gyri and uh, sulci and of course this gyri and sulci its benefit is to increase the brain surface area increase the brain surface area and we have certain sulci that separate the lobes of the brain from each other you see this sulcus this sulcus here from here centri to the temporal lobe this sulcus is called the central sulcus because it's تقريباً approximately is in the center of the brain so it is called the central sulcus and in front of this front, uh, central sulcus we have a gyrus here which is called pre-central gyrus or also it is called motor cortex responsible for movements and behind the sulcus behind the central sulcus we have another gyrus prominent gyrus which is also called a post central gyrus this is post central gyrus also it is called sensory cortex or somatosensory cortex and it is responsible for sensations all sensations um, uh, here it reach or the sensory impulses will reach this area or this gyrus post central gyrus of course we have another major sinus, sinus uh, sorry sulcus uh, sulci that separate between the uh, lobes here we have also we have lateral sulcus that separate the parietal and frontal lobe from the temporal and of course here we have another uh, sulci that separate between sulcus separate between the parietal and the occipital uh, lobe you see all of, the, uh, uh, all of these uh, lobes each uh, one of them has its own function like occipital lobe responsible for vision all the visual impulses will reach from the retina from the eye will reach to the cerebral cortex and we we know what we see uh, by this uh, part of the brain and also we have here the parietal lobe which is for the perception making sense of the world and spelling and also we have the frontal lobe responsible for uh, thinking planning organization and problem solving and so on as we will see later on and of course the temporal lobe responsible for memory ذاكرة تكون بالtemporal lobe يعني إذا any, any lesion any disease that affect any infarction or any problem with this lobe it will affect the memory the person cannot remember things and also understanding للفهم وكذلك لمركز اللغة تعلم اللغة يكون في التمبرال لوب The functions of the cerebral cortex or the cerebral cortex so in general it includes processing معالجة يعني processing معالجة يعني يستقبل ويعالج المعلومة مثل الكمبيوتر just like computer تعطي معلومة تعالج المعلومة وبعدين ينطيك النتيجة so it includes processing sensory information كل sensory المعلومات الحسية تصل هي القشرة الدماغ للكورتكس وتعالج وتفهم و و و و يعني يبعث لنا البرين الرد الفعل لهذا sensory information وكذلك أيضا controlling motor functions وأيضا سيطر لنا على الوظائف الحركية يعني احنا ما نتحرك بكيفنا نتحرك نشيل ايدنا او نحط رجلنا او نمشي او نقعد او نقوم تحت الكنترول اوف ذا موتور كورتكس اند بيرفورمينج كذلك انجاز هاير اوردر فانكشنز الوظائف المهمه هاير اوردر فانكشنز سج از ثينكينج مثل التفكير بلانينج تخطيط اورجنايزينج تنظيم and problem solving حل المشاكل كل هاي الأمور تتم عن طريق the cerebral cortex 
Now, we take these loops separately. We talk a few notes about each loop separately. First of all, we have the frontal loops. Al-Fassa al-Jabhi. It is the largest of the four major loops of the brain. And separated from the parietal loop by a groove called central gyrus. Oh, sorry, sarcus. The frontal lobe is covered by the frontal cortex, which include the premotor cortex and the primary motor cortex, which is also called precentral gyrus. So this precentral gyrus is the motor cortex. These lobes function in voluntary muscle movement. Voluntary muscle movement. Also in memory, this play a role in the memory. Thinking, tafkir, planning, tahtir, organization, tanzim, decision making, qararat, and problem solving, wahal mashakil, or a ma'adala, or a mushkila, or hulul, tahtaj hulul, it tim antariq, the frontal lobes, or the frontal cortex. The second lobes are the parietal lobes, and these parietal lobes are responsible for receiving, istilam, and processing, and معالجت sensory information, and معلومات الحسية اللي تصل من الجسم من الحاء الجسم من الفيفري مال الجسم كله حتى من الداخل تصل إلى parietal lobe, and the parietal lobe is a معالجة تعالج هذه المعلومات وتفهم و. يكون رد بالفعل الجسم بعد ما يستقبل هذه المعلومات الحسية يتخذ الإجراء اللازم حسب نوع الحس المعلومة الحسية perception إدراك إدراك والفهم and spelling تهج these loops also contain the primary somatosensory cortex. Somatosensory cortex located in the post central gyrus, which is essential for processing touch sensation. It is possible to process all the touch sensation that reach the parietal lobe here in this post central gyrus. All the sensation. Like thermal sensation, pain, and so on, reach through uh, to the parietal lobes to the post central gyrus. The occipital lobes responsible for receiving and processing visual information from the retina. The retina is the retina that is in the eye. Tersel or taltakut min al. أشياء الصور أو أي حركة تحدث أمام العين تنقل هاي طبعا من الأشياء يسموها visual information معلومات بصرية أي معلومة بصرية يعني يلاحظها البشر تنتقل إلى الرتنة ومن الرتنة من الشبكية تنتقل عن طريق ال optic nerve the face cranial nerve تنتقل إلى تنتهي وين ينتهي الأوبتيك نير في سعدنا أوبتيك يازمة تقاطع أوبتيك يازمة يعني صورة اللي مأخوذة تنقل من الشبكية تنقل إلى الكورتكس بشكل معكوس هاي طبعا تفاصيل بها إن شاء الله إذا صعدنا مجال نتكلم عنها في وقت آخر لكن أنت بتعرف إنه الصورة اللي تنقل من الرتينة تنقل معكوسة إلى عن طريق الأوبتيك نير تنقل معكوسة إلى الأوكسيبيتال كورتكس and in the occipital cortex this visual information will be processed to allege and يفهم الشخص ما هي الأشياء اللي يراها هي الصور يعني الألوان أشكال كلها تفسر وتعالج في منطقة الأوكسيبيتال كورتكس ولهذا هي يسموها يعني الاكسبيتال كورتكس يسموها الاريا اوف فيجن ريسبونسبل فور فيجن 
The other lobe is the temporal lobes, which is the home of limbic system structures. This limbic system structures, we will talk about it later on in the lecture, it presents within the temporal lobes. And this uh, limbic uh, system structures will include two structures, here, amygdala and hippocampus. These lobes, temporal lobes, organize sensory input. كل sensory input يصير تنظيم بالtemporal lobes and speech production and speech production احنا من نتكلم من يصدر منا الكلام شو يصدر الكلام عن طريق الفم واللسان وإلى آخره بإعاز من من التemporal lobes speech production also it has function for memory أيضا الذاكرة تحفظ بالtemporal lobes ذاكرة القديمة والذاكرة الجديدة الحديثة just like computer and understanding language وفهم اللغات أنت لما تسمع لغة مثلا English, Indian, Italian, Arabic فهم هذه اللغة وتمييزها من لغة عن اللغة الأخرى يتم في منطقة التمبرال لوبس So that's about the telencephalon. Now we will we'll, uh, we'll talk about the second division, subdivision of the forebrain, which is also called diencephalon. Diencephalon. The diencephalon is the region of the brain that relays sensory information. Stakwalina the sensory information and connects components of endocrine system like endocrine glands and so on with the nervous system with the nervous system the diencephalon regulates in a number of functions the diencephalon regulates a number of functions including autonomic functions autonomic functions like اشياء المستقلة autonomic مستقل او ذاتي Like breathing, and I'm gonna nafas, nafas, ma biradatna, one day. Blood pressure, tanzim, zawt al dam. These are the autonomic functions. Movement of the GIT, movement of the stomach, of the bowel, or so on. All these are regulated by the diencephalon. Also, it regulates the endocrine and motor functions. Endocrine functions, like for example, the, the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland secretes hormone, and what the nochamia, the prison hormonat. Hadi and hormonat when tosdar or when tofras min kibel al pituitary gland is not secreted hab hazardly. No. It is under control and under regulation by the effects of the diencephalon and one part of the diencephalon which is the hypothalamus. Also the motor functions. Motor functions also are regulated by the diencephalon. Also a play, the diencephalon, it also play a major role in sensory perception. Hidraq al hissi تلعب دور كبير في إدراك الحسي. Now what are the components of the diencephalon? The components of the diencephalon is composed of three parts. We have the thalamus, المهاد, hypothalamus تحت المهاد, hypo means below or hypothalamus الجزء اللي تحت المهاد. وعندنا البينيال, البينيال جلاند الودة الصنوبرية. Now the thalamus, it is a large egg-shaped mass of gray matter. All of you, you know the site or the location of the thalamus within the forebrain. And as you remember, we said that the thalamus, the third cervical, the third cerebral ventricle is between the ventricles between the two thalamus, the right thalamus and. Left thalamus. 
as a fair ventricles, fair cerebral ventricles. So, it's composed of gray matter. And you know gray matter, what do you mean by gray matter? Gray matter it means a collection of nerve body cells. So, it's a mass of nerve body cells. Egg-like mass of gray matter. The thalamus relays and integrates يستقبل و كمحطة and integrates يعني يدمج دمج أو للإمبالسس الاتصالة integrates a myriad of motor and sensory impulses between the higher centers of the brain يعني cerebral cortex and the peripheries all the other tissue or other structures in the periphery so this thalamus مثل محطة يكون تصل الإمبالسس sensory impulses وتنقل عن طريق الثلاموس إلى الـ higher centers اللي هي الـ cerebral cortex of the brain through this thalamus of course the sensory will ascend to the higher centers and the motor will descend from the cortex to the thalamus and to the periphery usually the sensory is afferent it goes to the cortex higher centers of the brain higher centers means the cortex of the brain and these impulses will be processed and to form or to 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 dress or the brain will take the decision and return to the thalamus also on a way of motor impulses to the periphery of the body. It is in this way the sensation of smell and taste are integrated resulting in a salivary response. What do you mean by this sentence? We remember that the thalamus it relays and integrates motor and sensory impulses between age, between the higher centers and the periphery. So I'll say a لو عندنا مثلا a sensation, a special sensation of smell and test. يعني الشخص عمل infection شم لمادة معينة وذوقة لنقل a lemon, a piece of lemon. When someone smell it and then test it, test it, this olfaction and testing of this material will goes through the nerves and reach the thalamus, and the thalamus through a bundles of fibers will bring these impulses, will take these impulses, sorry, to the higher centers of the brain. The brain. Cortex will process these smell impulses and taste impulses, sensory impulses, uh, impulses, and it will give an order after this uh, sensation, taking this sensation, it gives order to the salivary uh, glands. So the salivary glands will increase its secretion decrease the saliva see the, all these things يعني, pass through the thalamus to the higher centers and from the higher centers to the endocrine no, sorry to the uh, to the target like salivary as an our example to the salivary glands so it will cause salivation the second part of the diencephalon is the hypothalamus تحت المهات. It acts as the control center for many autonomic functions. وذكرنا شنو هي ما هي الوظائف الاوتونوميك فانكشنز اللي ذكرناها من including the respiration احنا بنتنفس يعني during sleeping we are breathe our respiration is continuous automatically. As an autonomic function, 
blood pressure our blood pressure usually it is constant say for example 130 over 80 it will not increase or decrease uh, all the times it, it regulated uh, to this uh, level 130 over 80 of course uh, unless there is another diseases uh, that affect the blood vessels so the blood pressure will be increased be high and we say that the patient has hypertension or decreased hypotension and but normally normally without these diseases of hypertension or, uh, or anything related to the vessels or heart normally the blood pressure would be fixed and regulated to a normal range and this is done by the hypothalamus this is the autonomic function controlled by the hypothalamus of course also we have the body temperature the body temperature all the times our body temperature is 37 ثلاث لكن بالأوضاع الاعتيادية بالأشخاص الأصحاء درجة الحرارة تكون ثابتة تقريبا 37 درجة مئوية 37 وعشر أو 37 إلى عشر هذه تكون ثابتة واللي يثبت لنا درجة الحرارة هو أيضا الهايبوثالوس وذس أوتونوميك فونكشنز ذس إندوكراين ستركشنز سكريتس هرمون طبعا ذس هايبوثالوس يعتبر محسوب على الاندوكراين ستركتشرز ليش؟ لانه لماذا؟ لانه يعطينا هرمونز وذكرنا احنا الاندوكراين ستركتشرز اندوكراين جلاندز ات جيفز هرمونز سكريت هرمونز تو ذا بلود اميديتلي سو ذس اندوكراين ستركتشر سكريتس هرمونز ذات اكت اون ذا بيتوتري جلاند تو ريجوليت بيولوجيكال بروسيسز including metabolism, growth, and development of reproductive system. You know, the pituitary gland, where it is present, it is present in the cellular torsica, which is part of the body of the sphenoid bone. And this pituitary gland has a stalk. Now, this stalk attached to the lower surface or inferior surface of the hypothalamus. So this is through this stalk, which connect the pituitary gland to the hypothalamus. The hormones of the hypothalamus will pass through this stalk and to the pituitary gland. And so the pituitary gland is working or functioning under the control of the hypothalamus. Some of the hormones from the pituitary glands secreted increase its secretion under the effect of hypothalamus and some of the hormones are increased also under the effect of the hormones that are secreted from the hypothalamus يعني الهايبوثالموس ينطينا هرمونات تأثر على الودة النخامية على البتوتري جلاند فإما تزيد الهرمونات ما أنت أو تقل الهرمونات من الهايبوثالموس فزيد الهرمونات من البتوتري جلاند وهي طبعا عمليه يسموها فيدباك ميكانيزم ندرسها ان شاء الله بالفيزيولوجي اذا مستقبلا. The third part of the diencephalon is the pineal gland او الغده الصنوبريه. And this pineal gland also is an endocrine gland. An endocrine gland which produces the hormones melatonin. It produces a hormone which is called melatonin. Production of this hormone is vital to the regulation of sleep wake cycles and also influences sexual development. 
so it has two important function um, first of all it, it is play a role it is vital يعني مهم جدا حيوي in the regulation في تنظيم عملية أو الحلقة ما بين النوم والاستيقاظ يعني الإنسان بالنهار يكون صاحي ويك وبالليل يدخل مرحلة النوم وثاني يوم الصبح استيقاظ نوم استيقاظ نوم وهاي الحلقة الاستيقاظ والنوم تكون تنظم من قبل هرمون اللي يطلق عليه اسم ميلاتونين هذا سكريتد فروم ذا بينيال جلاند which is part of the diencephalon which is second division of the forebrain also it influences sexual development النمو الجنسي ايضا جزء منه يكون تحت التاثير الميلاتونين that's secreted from the pineal gland the pineal gland converts nerve signals from sympathetic component of the peripheral nervous system into hormone signals thereby linking the nervous system and integral system so yeah عملية يعني ال pineal gland تربط لنا ما بين النيربوس سيستم والاندجرال سيستم بتحويلنا تحويله يعني بينيال جلاند تحول لنا النيرف سيجنالز الاشارات العصبيه كونفيرز ذا نيرف سيجنالز تحول الاشارات العصبيه فروم ذا سيمباثيك كومبوننت اوف ذا بريفيرال نيرفز من السيمباثيك كومبوننت اوف ذا الاعصاب الطرفيه انتو تحولها الى هرمون سيجنالز الى اشارات هرمونيه سو so, بهاي العمليه البينيال جلاند ات لينك ذا نيرفوس سيستم اند ذا اندوكراين سيستم هير وي شو يو ذا سايت اوف ذيس بارت ثري بارتس اوف ذا دايانسيفال اوف كورس ذيس از ا سايت اوف سيكشن اوف ذا برين And here is the cerebral, and here is the corpus callosum that connect the right and left cerebral hemisphere. And here we have the the thalamus. This is the thalamus, and this is the hypothalamus. And here we have the pineal gland. This is the pineal gland. And here. Below the hypothalamus, we have this structure which is called the gland, which is called the pituitary gland. And between the pituitary gland here, we have a small stalk, مثل يعني رابط بين الهايبوثالامس والبتوتري جلاند. So this hypothalamus will secrete glands. It is considered as endocrine structure. It secretes hormones that affect and control the secretions of the hormones that released from the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland give us hormones, many hormones, and these hormones from, from pituitary gland are under the control of the hormones that are secreted from the hypothalamus. And of course, this is the bones, and this is the cerebellum. Now we talk about the midbrain, or it is called mesencephalon. The midbrain or mesencephalon is the short upper part of the brain stem. الجزء الأعلى من جذع الدماغ. Lying between the cerebrum, ما بين المخ, above and the pons below. Where gesser, pons, you know, it means the bridge or gesser below. It is about 2.5 cm long and it passes the tentorial notch. The tentorial notch, if you remember when we talk about the meninges of the brain and we said that the roof 
of the posterior cranial fossa is formed by a membranous extension of the dura mater that separates the cerebrum from the cerebellum. So, this centurium cerebelli, its anterior free border, in the midline, we have a notch which is called um, tentorial notch. This tentorial notch allows the passage of the pawns to attach to a lower structure, which is the medulla oblongata. So the bones will pass, uh, sorry, the midbrain will pass from uh, below the cerebrum to attach to the bones below through a notch which is called a tentorial notch. The midbrain, it consists of two parts. It consists of a large ventral part and a small dorsal part. The two parts are separated by a narrow cavity which is called the cerebral aqueduct. And if you remember when you talk about the ventricles of the brain, and we said that the third cerebral ventricle connected to the fourth ventricle by or through a duct which is called cerebral aqueduct. So this cerebral aqueduct actually it presents between the ventral part and the dorsal part of the midbrain. The small dorsal part of the midbrain is called the tectum, and the large ventral part is called the cerebral peduncle. You know, the two parts, we have two parts of the midbrain, the ventral part, which is the large one, and the dorsal part, the smaller one. Between the dorsal and the ventral, we have the cerebral aqueduct, which is the duct that connects the third with the fourth ventricle. The dorsal part is called the tectum, and the ventral part, which is the larger part, is called the cerebral peduncle. Peduncle means suweka, يعني ساق صغير. السويقة المخية, cerebral peduncle. It's a, it is a collection of nerve fibers, tracts of nerves that connect between the bones and the, uh, the brain, the higher center of the, the brain, the forebrain, and they connect between the forebrain and the hindbrain. It's a cerebral peduncle. peduncle. The midbrain recreates movement and aids in the processing of auditory and visual information. So in the brain, the movement, the motor, and it would say even in the processing of auditory and visual information. The ocular motor and the trochlear cranial nerves are located in the midbrain, and of course, these cranial nerves control eye and eyelid movement. You see, in the forebrain, we have the first and second. And we have the olfactory and the optic in the fair in the forebrain. In the midbrain, we have the ocular motor and the trochlear nerves, the third and fourth. Cranial nerve located or arises from this area, from the midbrain. Don't forget these important points. From the first, from the forebrain, we have the first and second cranial nerve arise. 
or preserved. And in the middle brain, we have the third, which is oculomotor, and the fourth, which is the trochlear nerve, arise from the middle brain. The tectum, which is the dorsal part, طبعاً كلمة tectum is from the Latin for roofs, mean the roof. ولهذا هو dorsal. لأنه اتجاه الدورسل فيسمى دورسل أو the roof معناه معناه باللاتيني الروف. The dorsal portion of the middle brain that is composed of superior and inferior colliculi. These colliculi are rounded bulbs that are involved in the visual and auditory reflexes. The superior colliculus Processes visual signals, processes visual signals, and relays them to the occipital lobes. Here you see. Before we going to discuss these points, just to show you, to show you the the the, the midbrain and its division. This is the midbrain from here to here. All this is the midbrain, and as you know. This is the middle brain, and this is the forebrain above, and this is the hind brain below. So this is the middle brain. The middle brain is composed of dorsal, which is called tectum, dorsal part, small dorsal part, the tectum, and the cerebral peduncle, the ventral part, which is called the cerebral peduncle, uh, which is bigger. You see, this is this is bigger. Than this area. The dorsal, which is called the tectum, contain these new colliculus, which is small bulgings, colliculus small bulgings. Upper two superior colliculi, two right and left, and inferior colliculi, inferior colliculus, one colliculus, colliculi two. Uh, in two inferior colliculi and two superior colliculi. This is in the dorsal part of the midbrain. You see? And of course, between this, the ventral part and the dorsal part, here we have the aqueduct that reach the, that connect between the third ventricle, cerebral ventricle, and the fourth, uh, here, not clear, the fourth. And also we have this is the oculomotor nerve, and probably this is the uh, trochlear nerve. These two nerves arise from the middle brain, and cause of course the orbit for the movement of the uh, and the motor supply to the eye extraocular muscles. So these are the superior colliculus and this is the inferior colliculus. Of course, two right and left, right and left. The superior colliculus processes the visual signals, al isharat al basariya, the من الرتينا, optic nerve, تصل لي superior colliculus, and relays them, وتدفعها, وتبعثها, وتوجهها. To the cerebral, to the occipital lobes, the cortex of the occipital lobes. حتى تفسر هذه ال ال الإشارات البصرية تفسر في cerebral cortex. تأخذ من الرتينا تصل السبيل كوليكولوس من السبيل كوليكولوس تعالج وترسل إلى ال cortex, the occipital cortex. حتى يعني تعرف الإشارة الصورية ما هي بالضبط. The inferior colliculus processes تعالج auditory signals الإشارات السمعية يعني اسمع واحد أصوات يسمع لغة يسمع شخص يتكلم يسمع صوت أصوات صوت أي صوت خارجي تعالج هذه الأصوات وترسل وتذهب إلى الأوديتري cortex. In the temporal lobes, ويتم إرساله إلى the auditory cortex. 
وين تكون البيبل كورتكس اند تيمبورال لوبس That's about the dorsum subjecta. The second part of the midbrain, the anterior part or the ventral part, which is called the cerebral peduncle, swipa al mukhiya. The ventral or anterior portion of the midbrain, consisting of large bundles of nerve fiber structs that connect the forebrain to the hindbrain. Hindbrain. <coughs> So this part of cerebral peduncle is composed of bundles, hizm, of nerve fiber structs. Hizm min liaf asabiya qadima min al pons wa tkun hiya wasiya tabat tabaniya hai la hibal al al hizm al 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 of nerves fibers tracts qanawat aw tracts. يعني على شكل حزم تأتي من السبينال كورد وتصل المدلة بلنجاتا وتصل البونز وتصل المدبرين ومن المدبرين تلتحق تتصل بال بالفور برين and the cortex of the four brain فهي عبارة عن المدبرين عبارة عن طريق وصل ما بين الفور برين والهايند برين by this Bundles of nerves. هي محطة لوصول أو لربط ما بين الهايند برين والفور برين. Structures of the cerebral ventricles. Ventricle. Sorry. Structures of the cerebral peduncle includes the Tegmentum and cross cerebri. It includes two structures. The cerebral peduncle. It includes two structures. The tegmentum and the cross cerebri. What are these two structures? The tegmentum forms the base of the midbrain and it includes two things. It includes the reticular formation and the red nucleus. The reticular formation is a cluster of nerves. هي عبارة عن مجموعة من العصب within the brain stem that relays sensory and motor signals to and from the spinal cord and the brain. Reticular formation هو في التركيب شبكي. Reticular معناها شبك. هي عبارة عن شبكة مجموعة من الأعصاب تربط لنا ما بين the spinal cord and the brain عبارة عن محطة يعني انتقال الإعازات العصبية. Through this reticular formation, we sail to the brain. طبعا في كور سكور هنا عندنا الموتور والسنسوري سيجنالز. سنسوري هي السيجنالز الإشارات اللي تأخذ من the periphery of the body. It goes through the peripheral nervous system. It goes to the central nervous system and to the spinal cord. From the spinal cord, it forms these nerves, forms bundles that ascend up, ascending tracts somewhere, ascending tracts that ascend and reach the midbrain, and then after it, it leaves the midbrain, it will go to the higher center in the brain to the cortex or the cerebral cortex. Depending on the sensory, it goes to the sensory area and the motor will go. Descent, the motor signals will descend from the brain in the upper highs. We had a somewhat descending tracks, also apart from the brain, from the motor motor cortex in the brain, and descends to the mid brain, and then from the mid brain to the point of the lower to the spinal cord, and then from the spinal cord, it goes to the 
periphery uh, to the peripheral nervous system to the target organs to the muscles to the limbs to the uh, upper lower limbs or head and neck and so on so this um, reticular formation is shabaka al murakkaba mutkawna min hadi majmu'a min al-asab al-sa'ida wal-nazila al-sa'ida hiya sensory wal-nazili hiya al-motor al-sa'ida al-brain min al-spinal cord idha min al-brain idha al-phone brain wal-nazila al-motor from the motor area in the cerebral cortex to the middle brain and to the spinal cord and then to the peripheral nervous system goes to the all parts of the body like limbs, upper limbs, lower limbs, head, neck and so on and the red um, of course this is it, it aids in the control of autonomic and endocrine functions as well as muscle reflexes and sleep and awake status all these things done by the reticular formation the red nucleus is a mass of cells gray matter of course that it's in motor function it's in motor function another things present within the uh, midbrain is something is called substantia nigra or which is one of the basal ganglia basal ganglia are many ganglia which is a collection of uh, near body cells presents in the base of the brain one of these basal ganglia is called the substantia nigra which is related to the midbrain the ventral aspect of the midbrain and this large mass of brain matter which is a gray matter with pigmented nerve cells produces a neurotransmitter dopamine naqal al asabi dopamine produced by this substantia nigra which is one of the uh, ganglion or oh, sorry one of the uh, ganglia that present at the base of the uh, brain related to the midbrain so this substantia nigra produce a neurotransmitter naqal al asabi which is called the dopamine and the substantia nigra helps control voluntary movement and regulates mood of course through this neurotransmitter dopamine uh, this is very important in the uh, uh, control of the voluntary movement and also regulates mood يعني تعديل تنظيم المزاج regulate mood تنظيم المزاج مزاج الشخص The last division is the hind brain, which is also called rembencephalon. The hind brain is composed of two sub regions, which are called the metencephalon, which, uh, which is the bones and cerebellum, and myelencephalon, which is the medulla oblongata. So we know that the, hand, the hind brain. Is composed of three important structures and these important structures is the bones and cerebellum and the medulla oblongata the bones and cerebellum are called metencephalon and the medulla oblongata is called myelencephalon several cranial nerves are located in this brain region the trigeminal the abdusin, facial, and vestibular cochlear nerves, let's say the fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth, are found in the metencephalon, let's say in relation to the pons and cerebellum. The glossopharyngeal, nine, vagus, ten, accessory, and hypoglossal nerves, the ninth, 
10th, 11th, and 12th are located in the Milan Cephalos, I say in the middle of Langata. The fourth, cervical, the fourth cerebral ventricle also extends through this region of the brain. This is important. These, these, are, these points are very important. You should know it. If you remember, in the forebrain, we have the first and second cranial nerve. In the middle brain, we have the third and fourth cranial nerve. And in the hind brain, we have, from the pons, we have the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth cranial nerve. And from the middle of Langata, we have the ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth cranial nerves located uh, in the middle of Langata. In addition to these cranial nerves, we have the fourth cerebral ventricle, which also extends through this region of the brain. The hind brain assists in regulation of autonomic functions such as heart rate, digestion, respiratory rate, urination, and sexual arousal, maintaining balance and equilibrium, movement coordination. تنظيم الحركة موازنة الحركة and the relay of sensory information وكذلك أيضا تمحط لتحويل الإعازات أو المعلومات الحسية هاي كلها تتم جميع هذه الفنكشنز تتم من خلال الهايند بريد now few points about each subdivision of the hind brain regarding the metencephalon the metencephalon is the upper region of the hind brain and contains the pons and cerebellum as we said the pons a gesser is a component of the brain stem which acts as a bridge connecting the cerebrum with the medulla of langata and cerebellum. So the pons connect the cerebrum with the medulla oblongata and cerebellum. It lies between the medulla oblongata below and midbrain above. It is located in front of the cerebellum and behind the dorsum cilli of the sphenoid bone. Its shape is like a bridge, so it's called pons. Above and below, the pons is separated from the midbrain and medulla by transverse furrows, transverse fissures. Separated from the midbrain and from the medulla oblongata, above and below, by these transverse furrows. In the midline, anteriorly, in the midline of the pons anteriorly, there is a shallow groove which lodges the basilar artery. If you remember, when we talk about the basilar artery, how it is formed by the union of two vertebral artery, it passes on the basilar part of the uh, uh, occipital bone, body of the occipital bone, and in, in relation to the pons. And in the pons, in the midline of the pons, there is small depression. And uh, this, uh, within this depression or shallow groove, uh, the basal artery will ascend in the cranium. And this uh, groove within the uh, ventral aspect of the pons is called the basilar sulcus. The pons assist in the control of autonomic functions as well as states of sleep and arousal. The cerebellum is the largest part of the hind brain and occupies the greater part of the posterior cranial fossa. It is separated from the posterior parts of the cerebral hemisphere by the pentorium cerebelli. It lies behind the pons and medulla oblongata and between them is the fourth vertical. It is ovoid in shape and consists of two hemispheres 
united by a small median part termed the vermis. In front, there is a wide, shallow groove which lodges the bones, medulla oblongata, and the fourth ventricle. Behind, there is a narrow posterior notch which is lodged the fox cerebelli. The fox cerebelli, which is also one of the membranous extension of the dura mater that pass between the two right and left hemisphere of the cerebellum, forming this notch and the posterior aspect of the cerebellum. The surface of the cerebellum shows numerous parallel curves, fissures, separating by a narrow ridge, which is called folia. This picture shows you the cerebellum and its relation. This is called the cerebellum and its relation to the pons and medulla oblongata. So the pons and medulla oblongata and the fourth ventricle uh, are in front of the cerebellum. And of course, here uh, this uh, regularity of the surface of the cerebellum is called the uh, uh, folia. So, and of course, just like the uh, cut section of the, of the cerebrum, the outer side of this uh, area is called the cortex, which is also a gray matter. That is to say, uh, all the, the, multiple, the nerve body cells are collected here in the cortex of the cerebrum, or cerebellum, and uh, uh, so it is called the gray matter, or also it is called folia. Functions include control of skeletal muscles and cautions for balance or coordination and posture. يعني مثلا واحد إذا مغمض عينه ويقف على رجل واحدة توازن الجسم ليش ما الجسم يعني مثلا يقع للأمام أو للخلف أو للجمين أو لليسار ما يوازن الجسم ووقف الجسم في وضع طبيعي ويمنع سقوطه هو السريبيلا نفس الشيء بالنسبة للقيادة الدراجة أنت سوف تقود دراجة هوائية أثناء سوي دراجة هوائية واللي يحافظ على موازنة الدراجة الهوائية وانت تقوده هو من نعم السقوط وطبعا السريبيلا ويحافظ على التوازن فالكنترول بون سكليتال مصل موفمنت and وحافظ لنا على البالانس توازن وتنظيم الحركة مالنا والحفاظ على البوستشر يعني انت واحد واقف مثلا وضع الوقوف هذا يحافظ على هذا الوقف الوضع هذا بدون انحناء اليمين او اليسار هو اللي يحافظ عليه هو السيربيلا مركز توازن الجسم كله يكون بالسيربيلا So the cerebellum coordinates voluntary movement of the body so that the movements are smooth, balanced, and accurate. تكون حركتنا دقيقة وموزونة واللي حافظ عليها على هالوزن وعلى هالدقة هو السيربيلم. The cerebellum controls the posture and equilibrium. حافظ لنا على وضع الجسم وتوازنه أثناء المشي أثناء القيام أثناء القعود وإلى آخره. The myelencephalon, اللي هي المدلة فلنكاتا, the myelencephalon is the lower region of the hind brain, located below the metencephalon and above the spinal cord. يعني يكون بين الكونس وبين السبينال كورد. It consists of the medulla oblongata, which is the direct continuation of the spinal cord and extends from the foramen magnum to the lower border of the pons. So the both ends of the medulla oblongata is from the 
lower end is from the foramen magnum and above to the lower border of the pons. It lies vertically between the basilar part of the occipital bone and the cerebellum. Of course, between it and cerebellum, we have the fourth ventricle, which is about three centimeters in length. Its shape is piriform, cometary shape, or bulb-like, just like bulb. The lower part contains fine canal, continuous below with the central canal of the spinal cord. Of course, through this canal, the CSF will pass from the fourth ventricle to the medulla oblongata. It will pass through the canal within the medulla oblongata, fine canal, and will continue, of course, this canal will continue with the canal of the central canal of the spinal cord. And so it's, the CSF will pass from the fourth ventricle to the uh, within the canal of the medulla oblongata and which, contour, which, co which continue with the central canal of the spinal cord, all this canal, the CSF will pass through all this canal along the spinal cord. Uh, yes. Uh, this brain structure relays motor and sensory signals between the spinal cord and higher brain regions. Also, the middle of Langata, I don't call Marbor, the tracts or bundles of nerves from that ascend, the sensory that ascend from the uh, spinal cord. To the higher center, pass through the medulla oblongata, pons, and midbrain, and goes to the cerebral cortex. This is the ascending tracts or ascending bundles of nerves, which is sensory, and the uh, descending the tracts from the brain cortex to the midbrain, to the pons, and to the medulla oblongata, to the spinal cord. So this brain structure relays motor and sensory signals between the spinal cord and the higher brain regions. This we mean the cortex of the brain. It also assists in the regulation of autonomic functions such as breathing, heart rate, and reflex actions, including swallowing and sneezing. All these autonomic Functions are regulated within the medulla of Langata. And here, lastly, we see this picture. We show you the medulla of Langata. Above it, we have the pons, and below it, we have the spinal cord. And of course, this is the fourth ventricle between the medulla of Langata and the bones anteriorly and the cerebellum posteriorly. And this is the cerebral aqueduct that attach or that connect the third ventricle between the two telomeres and the fourth uh, ventricle. Thank you very much for listening.